All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about equipments. So knowing what each equipment are and how to use them is very important in terms of safety. So what are the following equipments and how do we use them? Well, in this case, I'm just going to name each equipment and then briefly describe their functions. So the first one, this one's called a beaker tong. A beaker tong is used to pick up a hot beaker because what happens here is two things. Number one, beakers, when you're putting on hot plates, can get really hot. So you need a way to pick them up. Number two, this right here has a almost like a rubber coating that will help grip the beaker for you. All right. Number two, these are what we call petri dishes. Petri dishes are for cultivating bacteria. So what happens a lot of times is that you'll put uh, um, nutrients for the bacteria, which we call agar, for example, and then you'll put a swab or whatever of bacteria on it. You shut it off and it, bacteria will grow inside. You could observe the bacteria from 360 degree angle. Number three. Number three is tweezers. Tweezers are used to pick up small items because sometimes your fingers are too large for that. Number four. This one's called a test tube rack. This is for you to be able to hold and conduct multiple experiments together using test tubes because test tubes, number one, don't stand well. They don't stand at all. Because of that, you need a way to hold them without your hands. Number five. Number five is called a hot plate. It's almost like a stove in which you can heat something up. Some hot plates are built with what we call a magnetic stir, and inside of it, it has something that is magnet in which it will start to spin. And if you have a beaker with a magnetic stir rod, it will stir that object for you. Number six. Number six is called a beaker is used to temporarily mix and hold solutions. Number seven is actually this one right here. This is called a, a ring stand. And what you do is you can attach many different pieces of equipment in order to conduct experiments and hold them together. Number eight is actually the one behind, and that is our, 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 our dropper. It's used to dispense and transfer liquids. Number nine. Number nine is what we call a test tube tong. It's used to pick up a hot test tube. Again, just like the beaker tong, it's rubber tipped. Number 10 has a longer name. It is called an Erlen Meyer flask. And this one allows you to mix solutions really well, as well as because the top is much smaller than a beaker, you can put a, a stopper on it to now store solutions as well. Number 11, these are what we call stoppers. Some people, if they're made up of cork, they're called cork stoppers. And what they're used for is to stopper certain items we have. For example, test tubes, Erlenmeyer flask, and so forth. Number 12 is called a ring clamp. Ring clamp is used to, for example, balance a beaker on it. You can use it for holding a wire gauze, for example, on it, so that you can conduct experiments without using your hands. Number 13, as we just said, is called wire gauze. A wire gauze is just like a gauze you put on, for example, a cut. What it does is that you place a hot beaker, for example, on this. What can happen is that hot beaker will not burn the desk. It won't burn through it. Instead, what's going to happen is the heat's going to dissipate over this wire gauze, which is made of metal. Number 14 is called a thermometer. It's used to, as you know, measure temperature. 15 is called a glass stir rod. It's used to mix things in, for example, a beaker. Now, why is it made of a glass? Glass is fragile. Why is it not made of metal or plastic? Well, two reasons. Number one is that plastics can melt. If you're dealing with something that's over 100 degrees Celsius, for example, when you are heating up a substance, that plastic could actually melt. Number two, metals. Metals are reactive. And because when they're reactive, if you're dealing with, for example, an acid, you put that metal stir rod in there, it will actually dissolve in that acid. So we don't want that. So glass stir rod is the best type of stir rod you can have. Yes, it can be a bit fragile, but you just got to be careful. All right, number 16. Number 16 is what we call a test tube. So it's used to conduct experiments in, and we can use it to heat up something, for example. Number 17, this is called a test tube holder. What we use this for is that we use this, 
we clap a test tube to this end right here. And we can use it to heat up a test tube, for example, by hand. So we use a Bunsenburner, and we now we can hold the test tube and move it around. The reason why we can't use this is because this rubber tip will melt, actually. Number 18. Number 18 is called a test tube brush. It's used to clean out test tubes because our, we can't actually get our fingers to clean the inside of this. Number 19, that's called a digital balance. It's used to find the masses of object. Number 20 is called a microscope. It's used to magnify objects with high power. Number 21, that's called a magnified glass. Magnifying glass. And what a magnifying glass will do is that it can magnify an object as well, just like a microscope, but with lower power. 22, that's called a utility clamp. It can hold onto objects All right here, for example, a flask or a test tube, and then attach itself to this ring stand, for example. And thus, you don't have to use your hands to hold onto this object. Number 23 is called a microscope slide. And also, the little tiny piece on top, that's also called a cover. And it's where you can put a specimen on there, put the cover on it, the cover slip in this case, and thus, because of that, you can now look at, look at this object through a microscope. Number 24, that is called a spot plate. Each spot is very tiny, but you can mix two solutions, for example, in there and see what the results are. So it allows you to see, in this case, 12 different experiments of mixing something in it. Number 25, that's our Bunsen burner. So this is now heating something up with a flame. Number 26, this is called a graduated cylinder. This is so that we can measure volume very, very accurately. 27, that's called a multimeter. It allows us to measure any voltage, current, in this case also resistance of electrical circuit. 28 is called striker. It's used to create a spark and, for example, light a Bunsen burner. Last but not least, number 29 is called a scoopula. A scoopula is for you to scoop something, and it's like a spatula in the sense that if you need to scrape something off, you could also use the tips of it as well. So that's the end of this lesson. As always, keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.